Ah, uh, Paper Mario. Such a cute, wholesome little series on the surface. A pop-up book aesthetic, bright colors. When the game was first teased in 2001, a lot of my classmates brushed it off as another kitty game, with little substance to speak of, drawing comparisons to Yoshi's story. But if you sit and watch the intro, right away you see that it's not so shallow. True, it starts as a nostalgic storybook sequence not unlike the intro to Yoshi's Island or Yoshi's Story, yet within the first few seconds we're shown Star Haven, a land of wishes that lingers high in the sky. Anyone who had played this game's predecessor, Super Mario RPG, may find this concept familiar, as in that game, the character Gina was a being from Star Road sent down to the Mushroom Kingdom to restore both his home and the wishes of the world. Star Hill, one of the game's later locations, even showcased the people's wishes throughout its landscape, so the precedent is already set for Paper Mario to revisit these ideas and develop them in a brand new way. We're shown the sanctuary in Star Haven, Breathtaking even now with its fantastic color and stylization, the narrator introduces the Star Rod, which will become a crucial relic in the story. We also meet the Seven Star Spirits, who take the design motifs from the Power Stars throughout the Mario series but reimagine them as unique beings with distinct designs. It all seems so pleasant until the page turns, and we see a purple magic koopa taped to the page. This old hat, Cammy, is a newcomer to the series, who will surface Bowser's right-hand woman in the story to come. What I love about this part is how meta it is, with the narrator flabbergasted at her intrusion and Bowser coming on the stage to gleefully announce his grand ambitions, while we get our first tease at his new light motif. What's really striking about this scene is how powerful Cammy appears from the get-go, using her magic to stagger those revered star spirits, while Bowser shatters the star rod's protective case and takes it for himself. And while we haven't gotten to know these star spirits well, Seeing them effortlessly turn into mere cards, and Bowser and Cammy claiming victory so fast shows a threatening side to Bowser that was never shown in such vivid detail in games before. And to top it all off, the intro sequence ends on a somber note, revealing that even if new star kids rise to the Haven, they cannot grant any more wishes. Though the pleasant title screen and cheery music that follows bring ease to new players, don't drop your guard, the fun's just getting started. Speaking of which, the first scene does some fantastic foreshadowing and setup for the story to come. You see a friendly paratrooper, Paracarry, swooping in to deliver the mail. Right away this establishes friendly Koopas, something lightly teased in Mario RPG's Monster Town, and with characters like the Koopa Bankers in Mario Party and Koopa the Quick in Mario 64, but otherwise largely unseen. The scenario starts simple enough. Luigi gets the mail. He and Mario are invited to Peach's castle for a party. There's a tease at Peach's light motif, which occurs throughout the game, then it's off to the castle, with a fantastic establishing walk through Toad Town, which serves as the game's central hub. On the way, you'll see tons of colorful NPCs, making the Mario world feel more alive than it's been since its predecessor on the Super Nintendo. Peach's castle provides a sense of familiarity, modeled lovingly after the Super Mario 64 design, but with brand new rooms to explore. These rooms are full of NPCs from all across the land, from toads, to penguins, to more friendly Koopas and their ilk. What I love about this is how the NPCs tease at future locations you'll explore, like the Dry Dry Outpost in Shiver City. Little Mousers from Yoshi's Island also appear as friendly NPCs, and even the ordinary toads come with unique designs that are sorely lacking from the series in the present day. For instance, you'll meet Taste Tea, whose cooking will open up a ton of possibilities later in the game. If you badger her guard enough, you can explore Peach's room and get a taste for her personality. From her simple taste in dresses to her adoration of Mario. It's an invasion of privacy, but oh well. It's still a fun way to get more depth on a character who'd otherwise been kept to a damsel's role, Mario RPG and <coughs> multiplayer spin-offs notwithstanding. If you skip the intro sequence, then you'd be proceeding without any indication that anything's amiss. It would seem like just a friendly, cheerful start to the story. If you watch the intro, you'd be forgiven for forgetting, though, when this introduction is so cozy and calm. In fact, it's quite the contrast to Mario RPG which hits the ground running and throws you right into Bowser's castle and straight into combat. Both approaches serve their narrative purposes, though, with Seven Stars capturing the tail end of one of Mario's many bouts with Bowser, and having what would normally be a final encounter get derailed when a giant sword impales the castle. But as cute and creative as this little party is, it wouldn't be a Mario game without conflict. Once you get your fill of chatting with friendly NPCs, it's time to go upstairs and meet with Princess Peach. All seems well at first, a friendly greeting between old friends, and the return of her leitmotif. Peach, exhausted from the socializing, just wants to have a friendly chat with Mario. 
But as they're about to head to the balcony, a tremor shakes the castle, and the sheer gravitas surrounding Bowser rears its head, quite literally. The ground beneath Peach's castle crumbles as Bowser's likeness bursts from beneath the soil. Crevices tear through the ground, trees topple over, dust clouds rise. A familiar Bowser motif from Super Mario Bros. 3 plays, and Bowser's huge fortress of a castle lifts Peaches right up into the sky. It's a moment that cements that, unlike in Seven Stars, where Bowser's first appearance was a goofy mini-boss, this time he means business. Peach's castle, captured so lovingly after the widely successful Mario 64, has been torn from its cozy courtyard, while our hero Mario runs in a panic frenzy alongside the princess. The clouds rush by, the sky darkens, then you get an awesome rotating zooming shot on Bowser's castle, with Peaches resting upon its back. In space. Bowser took an entire castle through the atmosphere, far from the safety of the Mushroom Kingdom. He didn't just capture Peach, he captured everyone who didn't escape the party. And while it's true that in previous games, Bowser and his minions had turned kings into animals, stolen Yoshi eggs, and even overtaken Peach's castle and trapped everyone inside the walls, there's something strikingly different between being told through brief exposition and actually seeing the moment of Bowser's latest conquest. You get the time to mingle with the NPCs and citizens and grow attached to his fresh take on the Mushroom Kingdom, only for Bowser to uproot everything in mere moments. It goes from broad daylight to a starry view out the window, and before Peach or Mario can fully process what's going on, Bowser crashes through that window, joined by Cammy once again. What's fun about this moment is how self-aware it is. Bowser fully expected Mario's interference. It's basically an old song and dance by now. Even Peach calls out how Bowser should have learned his lesson. Though Bowser asserts he's going to win this time, there's no reason to assume it just yet. Even with the intro sequence, why should we fear for Mario when every time without fail he comes out on top? The battle that follows is pretty basic. A simple exchange of blows from both Bowser and Mario, each dealing a single point of damage. Action commands haven't been introduced yet, and you can't do anything but jump. So as far as gameplay engagement goes, there's not a lot going on. But thankfully, the battle becomes more captivating midway through, when Bowser reveals that star rod he stole in the intro and uses it to take on a funky, rainbow, and starry sheen that would make Azrael Dreamer envious. Oh, and it can allegedly grant every wish he could imagine, which certainly ups the stakes, doesn't it? Bowser's so full of charisma and personality here, boastful and bombastic, and clearly loving the sheer act of villainy. Even in these early scenes, he's got a fantastic personality that makes him far more than the ominous boss you bop on the head with wind-up toys, or throw at bombs, or make a bridge collapse under as he'd been in most games prior. It's a fantastic continuation of Mario RPG's great character writing and localization, which first established the more comedic and over-the-top vibes of Bowser's character that became the standard for both Paper Mario and the Mario & Luigi series. But words alone don't make a strong showing. Not only has Bowser's attack power tripled here, but Mario's legendary jumps barely even tickle, and something tells me even vitamins won't be enough for Mario now. Bowser's so unimpressed, he decides to quit toying with Mario and cut to the chase, and then, with a single burst of fire breath, he deals a whopping 10 damage, the full capacity of Mario's HP at this stage of the game. Not only is this an effective show of his power, but it also proves that Bowser could have ended this at any time and simply chose to drag it out so that he could revel in his victory and rub it in Mario's face. Bowser's excitement is incredibly charming. He's so pumped to have finally beaten his longtime nemesis, yet at the same time, there's a distinct menace to his presence here, the way he decides to just blast Mario out the window with a bolt of lightning and let him fall through space. For as simple as the scene is from a mechanical standpoint, it's incredibly striking from a narrative one. Especially as a kid, I was so taken aback by the whole thing. Bowser winning? Mario losing in such a striking way? It set the tone for a story where I had no idea where it could go. For the first time, I was actually invested in a Mario story instead of just a Mario game. True, Mario RPG had the otherworldly threat of the Smithy game to give a Mario plot a sense of grandeur that was equally fantastic. Through my love of Paper Mario 64, I would eventually fall in love with its predecessor, then its sequel, and later the Mario & Luigi series. But for someone whose only RPG experience before had been Pokemon, Paper Mario made such a captivating first impression in just a few minutes and left a lasting impact and that first impression would linger further as the stakes are addressed and established. The ghostly apparitions of the Star Spirits, pleading for Mario to get up, the journey to Shooting Star Summit to learn how Bowser's control of the Star Rod prevents the rest of the world's wishes from coming true. Simply seeing the ruins where Peach's castle once stood visually conveys the gravitas of Bowser's crimes, while the initial scenes with Peach and Tink establish that she won't be a mere damsel this time, but an active participant in the story, even while captured. But that's not all. 
Paper Mario 64 is a game that goes full circle. Peach's Castle serves as both the introductory and ending area of the game. Thus, the intro sets up the start of the journey while leaving you itching for the rematch with Bowser at the same place where it all began. You know the destination before you even begin the journey, and you know that you will inevitably face Bowser and his stolen Star Rod once more. Thus, the question becomes, what will it take to reach the castle, and what will it take to defeat Bowser for real? The frequent cutaways to Peach's castle only further fuel this desire to get there, as you watch Bowser and his minions plot each chapter's schemes, while Peach and Tink try to work their way through Bowser's control, and try to help Mario along the way. Paper Mario's opening minutes take the tried-and-true Mario formula, but amp it up to 11. And for that reason, I think it's one of the most impactful starts to a Mario game, let alone a Mario RPG. And that's just the start of the story. In the future, I'd love to go in more depth about this game's writing, from the excellent characterization of Bowser and Peach to the fantastic build-up in its climax, and all the little world-building details. Those will have to wait a bit, though, as this video is mostly a way to gush over one of my favorite childhood games and test the waters for more Mario RPG content in the future. So if you like this video and want me to discuss more about the Paper Mario and other Mario RPG games, please do like, comment, subscribe, and share, as it will help this video in the algorithm and ensure that more people can see it. Got a specific Paper Mario 64 topic you'd like to hear me talk about? Feel free to suggest it, and I'll keep it in mind. Right now my channel mostly puts out Undertale and Deltarune content, but I am trying to branch out to other series like Kingdom Hearts, the Mario series, and hopefully some Sonic stuff in the near future. But because the algorithm is unpredictable, the best way to support my work is over on Patreon, like these fine folks here, where for as low as a dollar a month you can get access to scripts, videos, early access, and more. And higher tiers can even get more goodies like work-in-progress scripts, audio recordings, and concept art for various projects. A huge thank you to the patrons, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.